What's going on? Back like I never left. Doing better than I was last week, so. Here we go. Got some good stuff in store today. What up, it's your girl Mariah. You're now tuned in to Survival Kit Business. Today is April the 21st, 2022. I'm in a good mood today. Shout out to everyone uh, who's on the 9 to 5. Shout out to all the entrepreneurs out there. You know, y'all working 24-7. So shout out to everybody that's on the grind. Shout out to everybody that's vacationing too. I'm seeing a lot of people going on vacation. I'm I looked at my PTO bank. I'm like, yeah, it's definitely time to go somewhere. But now that I've uh, made it a priority to save up on my PTO bank. Now gas is expensive and flights are expensive and Airbnbs cost more than hotels now. So who knows? Maybe I'll plan a trip or something like that. Definitely a summertime trip. I got invited to go to the UK this summer. I'm um, not sure if everything will work out so that I can go. Uh, but very excited about that for custom clip rugs. If you haven't shopped with Custom Clip Rugs, please go to customclipperugs.com slash order form. Uh, fill out your order form and get your rug order started. There's a few things up for purchase as well. You know, it's a slow grind, but I'm having fun. It's my expression of art. Always wanted to draw. Uh, not the best artist, but I can say I'm getting hot with this rug stuff. So shout out to Custom Clip Rugs getting an invite to the UK. I'll keep you guys posted if that trip takes place. Not sure with the timing and everything like that, if it will, but the fact that I was even reached out to means a lot. So either way, I will be there in some type of form, whether digital or in person. So I'll keep everybody posted. Uh, Love Styles Collection just celebrated one year. So shout out to Taya and Ty with Love Styles Collection. I had a few sales over the past weekend, got some events coming up. So I'm very excited about that for them. You know, it's just everything is growing and it's moving in a steady pace. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, what else? Oh, yesterday was 420. Shout out to all the cannabis users. If you don't use cannabis, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, Just shout out to everybody who celebrated 420 yesterday. Somebody, I read a meme. It was funny. It said 420 used to be more fun when, <laughs> when, when we was illegal. I thought that was hilarious. Things are always more fun when you can't do it. Um, but there is one restaurant that I want to try. I believe it's in New York. And everything in the restaurant is infused. All the food, uh, the drinks. I think the dessert is even infused. I think the only thing you can get non-infused is water. So shout out to them. Um, I have aspirations to get into the cannabis business. Just not sure which route I want to take. Um, and shout out to all the guys that's locked with non-violent uh, marijuana charges. Now that it's legal... Uh, I think we should free the nonviolent offenders. I do. Like, they got caught with a bag on them. I think now that things are becoming legal um, and it's become a billion-dollar industry, I don't know. I think some legislation should get passed. But that's another segment for another day. But, yeah, shout-out to... If you know the name of the restaurant, uh, please let me know. I'm trying to go... Maybe this summer I'll take a I'll take a trip to New York. I love traveling to New York and DC. Those are like my favorite places to go. All right, so now that I got all that out the way, I missed y'all. How y'all doing? I hope y'all day went well. I hope your week is going well. If you're listening to this or watching this, thank you very much. I appreciate all the listeners and the viewers. All right, let's hop right into it. Today's episode is initiate or imitate. Quote of the day is imitation is the best is another form of flattery. Uh, you know, we've heard different variations of that quote. I do believe it to be true, uh, but a part of me doesn't like it. I'm not really the, the imitation kind of person. I don't like when people imitate people. Um, now granted, if you look over your own life, I'm sure you have imitated somebody, whether that was a mentor or a parent, a role model, um, a artist or you know you want to be a mechanic you've imitated other mechanics and how they structure their business i get that um but it's just a fine line between copying and you know kind of modeling after somebody so i try to stay away as much as i possibly can um and so you know i love words and word breakdown kind of went into it uh last week 
Uh, I'm definitely into the language of words. I think words have a very strong meaning. And so that's something that, you know, we should be keeping, um, you know, our our ear to and our, our eyes to when people say things and when you read certain language, you read certain words on businesses. Um, that's what pulls customers in. Like, how do you pronounce that? Um, that, that business name, that's one thing. So people want to know where it came from and the meaning of it. Um, that's something to keep in mind and I, it'll make more sense as we go into the episode. All right. So let's start with initiate. Remember, it's initiate or imitate. Initiate is to cause a process or action to begin. The beginning uh, derives from the Latin. So that uh, that initiate uh, part is initium. And that means beginning. So this is at the beginning. It's, there hasn't been anything like this before to initiate something. or uh, Even if it has been done before, the way you do it is brand new. That's what it means to initiate. So when we get into business and we get to creating and having our own ideas, we want to make sure that we are initiating ideas and that we're not imitating other people. Um you know, it's nothing like starting something and you know it's creative, you know it's an original, um, and no one else is doing it or no one else is doing it like you. I always say that like when AI came into the game, yeah, we had other, there was other ball handlers that was great. Uh, you know, you had Jordan, you had Kobe, and then here comes AI and his handling is crazy. He's crossing over everybody. He's dunking. He's going up for rebounds. He's doing everything that someone his size. They say he's six foot, and I think that's being very, very, very gracious to AI. Um, side note, shout out to the Sixers. We killing it right now. Three as as of today, the Sixers are three and zero against the Raptors in the first round. Of the Eastern Conference, and I just want to say we're here to take the chip. We're here to go all the way, all right? So, yeah, but AI, one of the greatest uh, six to seven, wear the uniform. He came in the game, and he did something different. So what we saw wasn't necessarily something new. However, the way he did it, it was like his own. He created this whole new era in basketball, and a lot of the newer basketball players uh, with the with some of the best handles really study him and got their game from him. So that's that's a modern version of it's not necessarily it's never been done before, but no one has ever seen it done the way you do it to initiate something. All right, and that versus imitating something. Imitating is to take or follow or to model after. And that first to take, that throws me off already, so I don't like imitation. I understand people do it because they just don't, they might not know anything else or, you know, that might just be what they do. Um, I personally don't like it, all right? And that word imitate comes from imitari, uh, which is like copied. And that also comes from the word imago, which is image, all right? So literally, you're taking, you have this image of something, and you're taking it just like that, and you're doing it over here. You're not doing anything different. You're not doing anything new. You're literally just taking what you see, and you're copying it. Uh, something like that happened similar with a phrase. So as we all know, or if you don't know, saw it in Philly, uh, country cooking she says y'all see it every time you look on her page you see y'all see it she's saying y'all see it almost i think almost every time i've seen her on social media um and when i've seen her in person hosting events she's always saying it that's her phrase that's what she says well another chef someone in the same exact lane as her right because again what she's doing cooking that's nothing new People have been, as long as humans need to eat, someone's been cooking. So she's not doing anything new, but the way Saw is doing it is very, very different. And if you follow her, you understand, again, that's country cooking. Um, I'm sure you could, uh, you could just find her on uh, Instagram. The way she's doing her whole restaurant and the way she cooks and her style of marketing, it's very, very different. It's nothing new, but it's different and it's unique to her. She's initiating this type or this style. Well, another chef in her same lane tried to take that same phrase and it was 
trying to say y'all see it. And so at first it was kind of like, okay, she just, she's inspired, right? She's inspired by it. Uh, but then she started doing it on every cooking video. And then, you know, how followers are because that's what happens when you build a brand capital. Uh, you become a, a, a base for fans to be loyal or followers to be loyal. And so loyal followers to country cooking begin to call that chef out. And uh, by the time I saw it, it all blew over. So I didn't see it in that, you know, live. I went back. I like to research and case study. And so when I went back and because... By the time I saw it, it made it to Twitter, which it always does. Everything makes it to Twitter, no matter what you do. Even if it's on TikTok, it's making it to Twitter. So by the time I caught it, I went and I looked and I was like, man, that's just, it's not even original. Like you're literally taking that phrase and you're taking it and trying to use it to make it your own. You're just copying. And nobody likes a copycat. Just hands down, you know, it's, at first it's cool to see that people want to be like you. If you've ever been at, in that position, it's cool, but that can make a person mad because it's like, yo, be original. All right. So there's a fine line between, you know, being inspired and just straight up copying off of somebody. So are you an initiator? Are you someone that's making this thing new? Are you putting your own creative spin on it? Or are you just imitating? Are you just following the trends, following the waves, see what makes money, and that's what you're just trying to do? You're just trying to, you know, find a come up real quick, all right? So find your lane. And whatever lane you are, I say do it to the best of your ability. Just know if you're on the side of imitating, people are going to say that, and they're going to call you out, like the, the chef example I just gave, all right? So... Of course, I can't just give y'all some information, in my opinion, without giving you some steps on how to counteract or protect yourself. In business, you always have to learn how to protect yourself. This is survival kit. I'm giving you some keys to put in your kit on how to survive in this business landscape. All right, so first things first, understand that there are things you can do to protect your business, your brand, even your phrase, even the words that no one really understands what they mean. It might be something, it could be a Latin term and you decided to use it. You see that no one else has used it before. And so you begin to make t-shirts and hats and now you're wearing it and people are catching, you know, they're catching wind of this new, this new word. Um, people are starting to look it up. They love the meaning of the word. And so now Someone takes that same word because they think it's cool and they put it on something and they start selling it in an imitating way. What can you do to protect yourself? All right, even down to, like I said, with country cooking, with y'all see it, how can you protect your phrase, right? There's a few different things that you can do. I'm going to give you the top four. Number one, copyright infringement. You should understand what that is and you should know what that means. And so you should do your due diligence to get your things copyrighted. Now, in the U.S., you don't necessarily have to submit your, let's just use an example of a novel, right? You have a plot in a novel. You don't necessarily have to uh, submit your novel to the copyright office. I think you should. Um, I've helped other authors self-publish. I just think it's a good thing to have. It's, especially if you're looking to take someone to court, you know, hopefully you never have to, but if you do, you'll have that type of documentation and you'll have, you know, you'll have your paperwork in order. It just looks more professional that way. All right. So you want to get your things copy, copywritten. Um, you know, that can go for novels, that can go for songs. Um, you just want to make sure what you have is protected. Like on Instagram, sometimes when you go live and you have music uh, playing in the background, they'll cut your live off because they don't want to get hit with copyright infringement because you're using their platform, all right? So you won't get hit, but Instagram will get hit. And so they have copy copyright infringement laws in place so that when certain music is played, they have to shut your live down. That's just an example. That's the type of protection that can be had if you make sure you're taking the necessary steps to protect yourself. All right, number two is trademark. Trademark, that goes back to that phrase that y'all see it. It will be uh, very, very wise, and I believe uh, she has, to copy, uh, excuse me, is to trademark that phrase. 
that y'all see it phrased. And so since we're using country cooking as an example, you would want to trademark your logo, the country cooking logo. You would want to trademark y'all see it. There is no, if you go to her page, you can see there's a logo for y'all see it. Y'all see it is actually, it's actually a logo for that. That's something that needs to be trademarked. You would want to trademark your brand. You can trademark your logo, a phrase, um, anything that has to do with that brand that people say or people see. That's I like to uh, think of it that way. If they can, if it's your name, the logo, the catchphrase, um, and it's attached to some type of product, then you want to get that trademark because you don't want anyone to steal it. Now, granted, you can show that this is something that you have been using. And that this, you know, this is something that's been in, uh, you know, it's been sold and it's been under a different name. Uh, you don't want to get into the weeds of having to prove that you've been using it. So the best thing to do to avoid all of that is to get your things copyrighted and, and trademarked. All right. The third uh, type of protection that you can have is patent protection. So a patent infringement is when someone still is your you know, steals your, your patent and you can, that, uh, will land in the civil suit as well. Uh, so with a patent that let's just say, for example, you have, uh, made it. There is, I like this example even better. There is a young, uh, I want to say they're from the continent of Africa. I can't give you the exact country. There's a young man who figured out how to make a smart TV powered through a microchip. No, no electricity, um, just use radioactive waves. I think that's dope. That's something that you will want to patent before a big conglomerate takes your idea and runs with it. You will want to patent that with the, uh, the trademark and patent uh, office. It's, I would say, ASAP, as soon as you figure that out. And another example, if you're thinking of codes for a program. So think about the Microsoft Suite program, right? All of that is, is a lot of coding that's involved in that. It will be wise for them to patent that coding because you don't want anyone to steal it and make something similar, make a replica um, of what you're doing. So it gets much, much deeper than, uh, of course, I'm just giving you surface level for the sake of the time and the episode, but you would definitely want to protect yourself in these different situations. And then the fourth one is tortious infringement. Tortious infringement is when somebody is steals your idea and now they're preventing you from even trying to do the idea and bringing that to light um a lot of times it gets uh it's kind of simplified to like defamation that's no that's a a better simple example for you to think about when someone's you know experiencing some defamation of their character um because of somebody who might have stole from them and trying to you know make everybody believe no nah, they're this and they're that um, they can get hit with a tortious infringement. So, they, again, that's when they steal your idea and they're preventing you from doing anything. With that idea, they're literally interfering with business. Uh, so, you want to get, you want to have certain protections in place so that when you are out here and you're excited about your brand, you're excited about this idea that you came up with, there is some ways to protect yourself. So again, those are copyright protections, trademark protections, patent protections, and tortious protection. You want to make sure you're aware of these things. Even if you're not full out knowledgeable, there's many things that I'm, I'm not aware of within these different categories. And that's why it's good to have um, some people in your team who this is their job, right? So uh, I wouldn't say go about the trademarking and the patent by yourself um, only because it's a lot deeper than just filling out paperwork. Um, copyright, that I, I'm in the state of PA. That was the easiest thing for me to do. I've done it multiple times. I've helped other businesses do it with their self-published um, writings. But I would say it's always good to double check that. And sometimes it's just good to have somebody on hand that knows how to do this. This is what they do. This is their profession. They do it all the time. That way you know it's done right. I think it's always better to do things right the first time than have to go back and clean up the work. Again, I speak from I speak from experience. This is all experience. This is all lessons learned. So I wouldn't give you anything that I don't believe myself. 
Um, there's still work for me to do within my brand, so I'm sure there's work for you to do within your brands. Just know that there are ways to protect yourself, all right? Again, this is your girl Mariah. You're tuned into Survival Kit Business. Thanks so much for kicking it with me. Thank you all for tuning in. I really, really appreciate all the love. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We're on YouTube. Um, some good things coming up. Um, thinking about getting back into the interviewing. I did that a while ago when it was called uh, Just Get Started. I was going around interviewing some new business owners. So I think I might start getting back into that uh, with a little spin. Doing something different, right? Initiating some something different since that's kind of the wave right now for everybody to interview. Like the big top dogs. Uh, thinking about doing it my own way. So... Stay tuned for that, all right? Again, thanks, y'all, for tuning in. Love y'all. Peace.